Dan, what is it that you do? I'm a teacher at the College of Western Idaho. Is that all you do? Well, I teach at Boise State University as well. Okay. Do you have hobbies that you'd like to share? I share? love to, I'm the, the, the slowest triathlete in the Treasure Valley. So I love to run and ride my bike. Um, swimming is a chore. I, I, I only do it because it's one of the, um, the aspects of the triathlon. I, I'm in love with running. I'm in love with cycling. I'm not in love with swimming. It's understandable. <laughs> so you said that you teach at CWI mm. and at BSU. What is it that you teach? I teach media arts at the College of Western Idaho and Boise State. And in addition, I teach some marketing and promotion classes at CWI. Would you tell me a little bit about your journey of becoming a teacher, when that started for you, yeah. why, all of that? Um, I made my money in professional television for a long time. And I did everything from you know, videography and editing to reporting to anchoring and then um, towards the end of my professional career, I got into newsroom management. And as a newsroom manager, although I would not have articulated it this way then, you are a teacher. You are um, articulating your vision of what excellence is to an entire staff and then helping them get to the point where they're reaching that, uh, the, you know, the boss's expectation of excellence on a, on a regular basis. And um, I was teaching, I, I, was, I was the managing editor of the NBC affiliate in Spokane, Washington, when my general manager came to me in the middle of August. He was on the board of directors at Gonzaga University, and he said, hey, I need to talk to you, because um, one of the, the professors at Gonzaga said, they had a media professor go on sabbatical and, and just not come back. We're two weeks away from the start of the semester and they don't have anybody to teach these foundational classes. He said, um, when we started talking about bringing you on to, to be our managing editor, you said someday you wanted to teach. How about now? So uh, we made a deal where on Tuesdays and Thursdays, between 10 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I was relieved from the NBC affiliate, and I went and, and, and taught um, just on those two days. So at about uh, the midterm point, the director of the program at Gonzaga approached me, and he said, uh, how's it going? And I said, oh, Bob. It is the best part of my week. They're so anxious to hear everything. And it's like, you know, Prometheus coming down and saying, oh, fire's easy. <laughs> and then they're like, it's the greatest thing in the world. Uh, I, I, I love my time with them. And, and he said, well, would you consider doing it full time? And I'm like, wow. I mean, like, I've just been a, a TV guy for all of my professional life, and I'd never really considered uh, uh, doing it like, like so early, relatively speaking. And we had you know, more and more conversations and we started to get more serious. And at, at one point we're out to lunch and uh, we started to talk numbers. And he wrote down a number on a piece of paper and slid it across to me. And I'm laughing now because I laughed then out loud and I didn't mean to. It's like, oh, jeez. Uh, you know, back in the day, TV was, you know, pretty fat. It was, it was, it was, it was nice. And this figure was nowhere near that. And he said something that I'll always remember. He said, you'll never be as happy being as poor. <laughs> <laughs> and for whatever reason, I talked to my wife about this and, and everything just seemed right. And we were like, okay, you know, we weren't rich, but we were in a position where, you know, we could afford to make a, a move like that. And that was, oh Lord, 19 years ago. And so I taught there for um, 17 years as their director of broadcast studies. And um, 
did, did some really fun things uh, to, to, to take um, a program that had been kind of dormant. Um, there was a studio, but um, the, the students were really doing anything with it. So it was kind of like where somebody says, I've got an idea for a show. Well, I've got a barn. Okay, you know, let's, let's make some stuff happen. And the beauty was, it was like, you know, my own laboratory where if I, if I dreamed of an experiment, it got to actually come to fruition. And the experiments took the form of television shows and lesson plans and um, you know different kinds of um, experiences to help the students get to where uh, they needed to be as far as um, making a difference in the professional world as 21st century storytellers. So. so you became an instructor. What kind of qualifications do you have to be a professor at a school? Do you have to go to special schooling? Where? Where did you go to school, I guess, is now what I should ask. Excellent question. Did you so do what, internships? Um, uh, I'm a freak because I didn't come into academia through the front door at all. Um, I explained how there was a crisis, and they said, Ugh, that one. You know, you heard that, that uh, uh, saying, any port in a storm is good for the ship kind of thing. It was probably like any professor, anybody who would stand in front of the class and, and do the things, right? Um, it's just wonderful that there was this, you know, confluence of, of um, experiences where um, I, they determined that I was right for the program. I loved the school. I loved the mission. And so when I was meeting with the dean, he's like, yeah, you've got a bachelor's degree and we're this highfalutin university. He's like, it, let's do this, but with the understanding that you'll get a master's degree here at Gonzaga University, and oh, by the way, we'll pay for it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, let's do that. That is that is absolutely not the typical way. And in fact, uh, if there was such an opening uh, today, they would never have considered somebody with my qualifications, though. You know, it was like 14 years of professional experience teaching the thing. Uh, sometimes academia is rather stuck up in that regard. Um, and, and I agree that um, there is, uh, you know, the theoretical and praxis, but, but my point is that, you know, both are necessary. And so, yeah, through my education, uh, in my master's degree, uh, it, it helped in the, the, the theoretical realm where I was skewed more heavily toward praxis. But um, it, was, it, was, it was unique and it was wonderful and, you know, was it, you know, meant to be? I don't know, I guess, but we made, we made it work. So with what you've just said in mind, what would you recommend to somebody trying to get into the industry uh, of either news and or being a professor at a university or a college? It, well, that's an interesting question. I would say before you take the bold step to get into academia and say, you should think this about that, I, I would say do something and, 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 and have a resume that is steeped in praxis, that is um, be that kind of a person who says, I'm not guessing here. I know, and, and you know, for you specifically, I know exactly what it takes for you to realize your dream. I'm not guessing, I'm not reading trade magazines, I'm not looking at a textbook that says this is what you ought to be teaching. Um, and in addition, uh, I'm very, very lucky that I have this broad and, and ever-growing network of people who help keep me current. What, what I'm talking about in class every day is based on what my dear alumni are telling me is happening in addition to how I process that through my experiences. So yeah, before you uh, are that bold to say, you know, people ought to do it my way, you learn many, many different ways first. As far as getting into the television industry, uh, you know, you're ready now to get started. And um, I would say get a job as the lowest possible 
entity of the station and coil cables and roll cameras around and you know run the teleprompter or you know get coffee or do anything you can to get into the building so that that becomes your happy place that becomes your comfort zone you begin to understand the overall process from many many different perspectives and then find one of those that um, really really excites you I think you do have a right to have a smile on your face when you go to job when you go to your your place of employment um, I don't believe in that axiom of if you love what you do you'll never work a day in your life because I love what I do and I work really really hard at it and it is hard sometimes um, often it's hard but um, you know, if it, if it wasn't hard, then you're not really as, as proud of having contributed the way that you did. Congratulations. Um, I, I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. I really, really am. You and, and, and all of you have decided something amazing, that you have potential. And um, you have decided to work really, really hard to realize that potential. And you should be really, really proud of yourselves uh, to say that, oh, you know, now the hard work begins. No, that's not true. That, that every day that you've balanced your life and work in school and every day that you didn't half-ass it where you really said I could just put this amount of effort in but um, you did more that's wonderful and, and and that's what employers in the 21st century are really looking for I tell my students all the time that when you get into the professional world you don't get a list of 10 things like do this this way and do this way and then and when you've have checked off number 10 I will pay you money that's not how it works you get a creative challenge to which you do not have all the answers and with your brains and your hard work ethic you come up with a creative solution to that challenge and um, so you know you're on your way already and I, I, I don't like it when people say oh you know when I get to the real world you know pinch yourself it's real right now and and the way you are right now informs the way <clears throat> you're going to be of course you're always going to develop but you know be proud of yourselves for accomplishing this thing right now and I'm gonna be there at the uh, uh, at the commencement ceremony you best high-five me I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna be really really happy and, and, and proud for you but this is all of this is real and um, take a second and breathe and, and look back and go, wow, I have accomplished something.